Hi everybody, Mr. Johnson here with another episode of the Artist Gallery. Um, if you are one of my students, make sure you have your packet of images and a writing utensil so that you can paste or tape those images into your sketchbook or your visual journal as we talk about them. Make sure that you're including the notes in those white bo boxes that pop onto the screen. And I'll remind you as we get there. So this week, I'm gonna shrink myself over here. We're gonna talk about uh, a really cool American artist, I'm still in the way, named Wayne Tebow. So Wayne Tebow um, is a modern artist. He uh, is associated with the pop art movement, although he claims that he is not a pop artist. Um, he uh, was born on November 15th in 1920 in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, and uh, he moved to Long Beach, California about a year after he was born with his family, and he ended up kind of going to high school growing up there in California in the Long Beach area. One summer during his high school years, he apprenticed at Walt Disney Studios drawing uh, what were called in-betweens, well, short little animations that went in between the, the larger programs that Disney was, was playing on TV. Uh, and he drew Goofy and Pinocchio, Jiminy Cricket, at a rate of $14 a week. Uh, he served as an artist uh, and the first, for, uh, he served as an artist in the first motion picture unit of the United States Army Air Forces from 1942 to 1945 and did cartoons and animations for them. Uh, uh, Tebow subsequently began teaching at Sacramento City College, and in 1960, he became an assistant professor of art at the University of California, Davis. Uh, he is known for his paintings of production line objects found in diners and cafeterias, most notably desserts, pies, pastries, ice creams, and cakes, and candy. As a young man in Long Beach, California, he worked at a cafe named Mile High and Red Hot, where Mile High was the ice cream and Red Hot was the hot dog. He was associated with the pop art painters because of, of his interest in objects of mass culture and everyday life. However, his works were executed during the 50s and 60s, slightly before the official beginning of the pop art movement. And he is still creating artwork now. Some of the, the Tulip Sunday's painting on the top of the screen here was painted in 2000. And 10. Uh, on October 14th in 1994, Tebow was presented the National Medal of Arts by President Clinton, and he also received the Lifetime Achievement Award for Art from the American Academy of Design in 2001. And in November 2019, Christie's, which is a famous art auction house, set an auction record for the artist's work in Cased Cakes which sold for $8.5 million, which was a high, a record high for Wayne Tebow. Uh, so that's all, uh, that's all pretty cool. Good for you, Wayne Tebow. So let's take a look at some of these artworks. I think these are absolutely gorgeous for so many different reasons. Now, usually when we talk about an artist uh, in the artist gallery episode, we go really in depth about the meaning behind each, each of his paintings, the techniques that he uses, the imagery that the artist uses. Well, here, these are two Sundays, right, called Tulip Sundays from 2010. And his idea was to capture what he thought was kind of quintessential Americana. And that was food from diners where people of all uh, classes, cultures uh, could gather you know, and order these classic American foods. But one of the things I absolutely love about Tebow's paintings is his use of color. So if you look at this image, uh, just at a glance, you go, oh, two ice cream sundaes and uh, these, you know, nice glass jars that you would get in a diner or restaurant. But if you look closely at them, there are a couple of really cool things that Tebow does. One of them is that he uses these bright colors as outlines around his subjects and they keep changing. So for example, on the top right of the Sunday, it's this very light sky blue color that outlines it. Then if you look at the glass that the ice cream is in on the left side of the first glass, it's kind of yellows and oranges and this bright red. It's more uh, red and gray on the uh, one on the right. If you look at the bottom of the glass, there's outlines in blue, yellow, little bits of red, purple. So. It's not just that he paints in a color, but he's including little bits of all of these bright, bold colors across every part of his canvas. 
just looking at the glasses that the ice cream is in, they're painted with yellow, light blue, white, aqua, pink, right, green, purple, uh, cream, beige, red, all of these different colors that make up a glass of ice cream. Even the scoop of ice cream itself, I would guess it was strawberry because it's mostly pink. But other than pink, there's white, there's beige, there's pale yellow, there's red, there's a crimson, there's light blue. All of these colors that make up that scoop of ice cream, that's one of the things I think is so cool about Thibaut's work. Uh, another thing that's very stereotypical of his work is that the background is empty. So here they're sitting on this very light blue surface. It has a, a little uh, mint green edge and then an off-white background. And that's extremely common for Thibaut's artwork. The other thing that's really common that we see here are his use of bold colors in the shadows. So we can tell that the light is coming from the left-hand side. The ice cream casts shadows on the ground, but the shadows here are blue and red, green and purple, which I think is really cool. Um, this might be my favorite image of his. So this is the next one to include uh, in your journal. And this is called Cakes. Painted in 1963, and of course my notes for it, which you don't have to write down, so many cakes. So what I love about this are a few things. One of them is the illusion of depth. It, to me, right off the bat, this looks like a photograph. And there are a few reasons why, to me, it looks like a photo of a display of cakes when it's actually a painting. The first one is the way he's overlapped these figures and used perspective to show that they are three-dimensional. For example, in these bunt cakes, you can really see the inside of those uh, you know, openings in the cake. The way they overlap each other shows a natural progression of depth. The other thing that, that makes it very realistic for me is the lighting. There's a constant light source. It's coming from the upper left side, and you can see it's casting shadows of the plates underneath uh, all of these cakes on this light blue table surface. But their cakes are also shaded on those sides, and you can see cast shadows from the cake on the plates, which I think is really cool. But the final thing that Thibaut does that is my favorite thing, because it's the art element I'm most obsessed with, is the texture. So I'm going to actually back up here so that you can see the, the image. Uh, and he layers this paint on, thick and heavy. It's a technique called impasto. Uh, Vincent van Gogh uses it, and uh, Wayne Thibault uses it. And impasto is a thick, bold application of paint, where the paint is really gloppy on the surface. So if you were to wipe your hand over the painting, it would be rough and bumpy. You'd be able to feel it. So the cakes not only are painted with shadows, but this texture, if you look on the side, the frosting of these cakes, he would actually layer the painting on the canvas as if you were frosting a cake, taking a little knife, right, and spreading it around. That way, when the paint dries, it really gives the impression of frosting or whipped cream or icing. Right, in Cakes here, he paints each dessert with thick and heavy strokes using oil paint that represents, right, the buttery frosting or the whipped cream. His paint kind of becomes and then the icing layered on the cake, which I think is really, really cool. And again, his use of color here is fantastic. This is a limited color palette, so all of the cakes are in these kind of cream and beige tones, which gives them kind of, a, I think, a, a restaurant feel, an old-timey Americana feel. They, uh, there's nothing really bold that jumps out of this one, no bright blues or bright greens or bright yellows. Everything's toned down, but that gives the whole painting a sense of unity. But let's take a look at some more of his works. This is one you don't have to include, but I like it because the close-up of these paintings really show that texture that he uses. This is called One and a Half Cakes from 1981. And if you look at the very top of this cake, you can see the thick application of paint that gives the impression of frosting on that cake. And even on the side of the cake, now we know this is a yellow cake, but again, it has white, yellow, cream, pink, blue, red, orange, all these colors in it. And then the half a cake on the right side, I love the split of colors uh, inside the cake, and that's the shadow cast by this yellow cake. You can see it hitting this first cake here. Again, the shadows are blue and purple. And look at all this great texture that he makes uh, by applying the paint so heavily. I think that's really cool. Now, a lot of these paintings are large. Some of his paintings are five and six feet in size. 
So when you look at them, right, hanging up on a display in a museum, you get this huge impression, just this endless wall of cakes, um, or in this example, slices of Boston cream uh, painted in 1962. So again, hopefully you can identify all of those characteristics of Wayne Thiebaud's paintings, the bold use of color, right, all these shadows, are bright, bright blue, this ultramarine cobalt blue color is absolutely beautiful. And then colors inside the cakes, including blue and pink and red and yellow and cream and orange. Uh, even look at the outlines of the plates, right? He's outlined them using uh, orange, aqua, red, blue, purple, mint green, all these bold colors, but it just gives a really uh, eye-popping look to his paintings. And then the final thing that should be very obvious by now about Thibaut's paintings is that thick application of paint called impasto, and that's what creates the look of the frosting by the texture on the cakes. I think they're so cool. So here's a, uh, a video that's gonna talk uh, a little bit about Wayne Thibault and his process, but also some of the other things that he paints because he doesn't just paint cake. Wayne Thibault is one of the giants so let's of look at some our generation other of artists. Examples. The subjects are things we all know and we all see. You know, every time you go into a diner and you see the, the little stands of pies and cakes and that sort of thing, I mean, that's what we're looking at when we see Thibault's pictures. But there's always something a little bit off about each of them. I love the sketches. The compositions um, are classically arranged. They're incredible geometries. So there's almost as much um, sort of rigor in terms of the way he sets up what he's going to paint, whether it's a row of pies or cakes, five hot dogs sitting on a table. And then he gives us a viewpoint that's not what we would actually probably be seeing when we were out in the world. But this is something that's really characteristic of so much of Thibault's work. He'll show a slot machine, but he shows it to us as though almost from the vantage point of a little kid, we're not looking down on it, we're looking either straight across or slightly up at it. So it transfers the relationship that we know between ourselves and an object or our sense of our normal spatial relationships into something that's different. Yeah. And so it gives us Notice all the this colors, sort of double right? take, textures. an immediate reaction that makes us go back and have a second look and try to figure out what is so magic about what he's painting. There's a huge amount of wit in what he did. Yeah. I mean, he worked for a while. In fact, when he was a kid in high school even, he decided that he wanted to be an illustrator or a cartoonist. And when he was in the Air Force during World War II, he actually did illustrations and cartoons for the base magazine. He ran a cartoon strip. I mean, he has this sort of innate, ingrained wit. And it comes across really in the paintings. He continued on in the 60s That's cool. doing other kinds of landscapes. And Color. he started doing these amazing sort of vertiginous landscapes of San Francisco, you know, where the San Francisco is hilly. The, the roads go like this, and you get to the top of a hill and you look down and you actually can't quite see the bottom of the hill where your car is going to drive. And he picks up on that and flattens out the space some. So when you're looking at these pictures, on one hand you feel like it's an aerial view, you're up in an airplane looking down on, the, on a landscape, but you're also, it's also as though you're looking at it sideways. So you'll see a street or a series of streets with buildings that look like they're going straight up into the sky. So it's was, what San Francisco well, looks like, genius. but it's more. It's intensified. It's sort of condensed into a slightly more dramatic way of seeing what we see. Everything is intentional. There's nothing accidental in his pictures. Colors and It's skin. all there. The color contrasts, oh. the subtle, very, very, very thin lines by a swash of really rich, kind of dense, juicy oh. paint. All of it's intentional. He thinks it all through, but when he actually manipulates the paint, determines the size of the canvas, there's a huge amount of just simple human intuition and visual experience that comes to bear on how the images end up looking in the final analysis. I, I just love getting to see just even those few little examples of some of his other work. The cakes and the pastries and the desserts are my favorite. Um, I mean, I love food and art, so uh, his paintings are, are really, really exciting and interesting to me. But I do really appreciate the landscapes and the figure paintings that he does also. So if you are interested in Wayne Thiebaud's art style or his work, 
if you Google him, there are hundreds of other paintings aside from the dessert and candy that we're looking at uh, that are really, really fascinating. Uh, this one is called Confections. It's different uh, ice cream desserts. So you can see that lined up, painted in 1962. And you've got uh, on, the, on the left here, you know, some chocolate mousse, chocolate pudding with some whipped cream and a cherry. I'm not really sure what the center one is. Maybe maybe sherbet uh, or, or, or something like that. And then uh, on the right, it looks like, you know, vanilla and either peach or orange that swirled in there. And then here, I'm going to move these out of the way. And then on the right, I don't know if these are slices of peaches or apples. Uh, because of his color use, I'm not really sure. But again, look at the way he's painted these glasses. Now here, they're very clear, but the outlines on them, again, bright green, blue, aqua, purple. Here there's red. Here it's yellow. And even in the bases of these glasses. So the colors are not necessarily realistic. You would not have right, these bright greens and yellows and aqua blues in, in every glass right, of, of ice cream or dessert. But the colors make them so vibrant, makes it really stand out. And that's uh, one of the things that he's amazing at in his paintings. I love the shadows. I like the, the flat background. And again, it's something I would usually discourage in my art class. But when he presents it, it's this very straightforward image, almost like you were taking a Polaroid right, of the ice cream sitting up on a counter. And I think the way he presents that is, is really cool. Uh, uh, so, and then just some that you don't need to include, I just think are, are beautiful. This lollipop tree. Uh, he's, here he's, he's invoking childhood memories. Uh, he says, and I'm going to quote, uh, you take something like a lemon meringue pie. It's quite a beautiful thing. It's more than just a subject. It's also a kind of relationship to the paint itself. You really feel like you're sort of making the meringue and working with the pie. So as he's doing right, these paintings, he's really trying to get the feel of what that food, that candy, that pie, that ice cream you know, is like. And again, the beautiful colors in here are very childlike, and it's almost like he's painting a memory right, of what these looked like in the cafe. Maybe not exactly what they look like, but sometimes your memory you know, changes the way things appear, and it you know, looks a little brighter, a little happier. Um, I believe this is the last one, some blueberry custard. Now, these are in a display case. If you were to go into a bakery um, or a diner, you might see that glass case you know, with the dessert. So here you've got slices of blueberry custard on the top and another pie on the bottom. Again, just the beautiful way he lays in this texture and this paint. The slices are not identical. They're very similar, but each one is slightly unique, which I think is really beautiful and uh, uh, really amazing for an artist to be able to do that and create that kind of pattern and consistency in his work. So we have a journal prompt for you. So if you're in my classes, uh, I want you to think about Wayne Thiebaud's artwork. And he takes these very simple, straightforward subjects like ice cream or a slice of pie. So for you, what seemingly unimportant part of your life would you like to memorialize? Why do you think people relate to paintings of simple everyday subjects? Why do you think a painting like this uh, example, or any of his examples, uh, stirs such a, a response from the viewer? Why are these so popular? And, you know, like he's done with desserts, what part of your life would you like to memorialize? And let me know why. All right, thanks for listening, and we will be back with another episode next week.